This video covers the basics of intangible assets. Intangible assets are going to allow the company to benefit in future periods, but they don't have any physical existence. You can't see or touch them, and they're not financial instruments. They're not stocks or bonds. They're normally classified as long-term assets, and let's take a look at Pfizer's intangible assets on their balance sheet for the most recent year, December 31st, 2019. We can see that the company had $167 billion of total assets, and more than half are coming from intangible assets. Types of intangible assets that we're going to cover, patents, copyrights, franchises, licenses, trademarks, trade names, and goodwill. Let's look at how do we record the costs incurred in order to get the intangible assets? Do we capitalize the costs that the company incurs? In order to capitalize a cost, we have to be able to answer the, these two questions here. Will this cost generate probable future economic benefits? And can we reliably measure that asset's value? Are we gonna, let's say we're working on developing a new, a brand new product. Will that give us, will this, all these costs that we're incurring now actually result in a product that we can sell and get cash? And if so, can we have a, come up with a good estimate of what that asset is worth today. Or in other words, the present value of the future cash flows we're going to receive from developing this product. These costs that the company incurs on its own of trying to develop and create new product, these costs are not capitalized. GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, say it's just too difficult to answer these questions. We don't know if something good is going to come out of all these costs. And even if we think there's a real high likelihood that it will, it's just so hard for us to know what, how much cash are we going to get in the future from that asset. So most internally generated costs, the cost of developing, designing, testing various products and ideas, they are not capitalized, meaning they are expensed immediately. They're considered research and development expense. The one caveat is legal costs. So company works hard to develop a product. All of those costs in development go straight to expenses. But once it says, you know, this is a pretty good product, let's put a patent on it. Those legal and registration costs to getting that patent, which are generally not that much, those are the only costs that the company can actually capitalize or record as an asset on the balance sheet when it's creating a product on its own. Here's an example. ABC Pharma works on developing a drug over a span of five years. Here we see the financials. So every year for five years, the company incurs a $3 million expense, records it as research and development expense. There is no asset to show for all of these costs. Then in the beginning of year six, 2019, the company obtains a patent on the drug. So it goes out and it deals with the government and it gets a patent. And that patent was only $10,000, the legal fees to obtain the patent. So the company spent $15 million over the course of five years and has an asset worth $10,000 on its books. But the drug works out to be really good and Pfizer's really interested in it. ABC Pharma sells the drug to Pfizer for 30 million. So after five straight years of $3 million in R&D expense, the company ABC Pharma now records $30 million of revenue with, with only a $10,000 expense as they get rid of that patent because they sell it to another company. So we see a very large mismatch between when the expenses are incurred and when the related revenue is earned. Pfizer, on the other hand, just purchased a patent because it purchased it from an outside organization, it wasn't developing something itself, it records the value, the patent at the acquisition cost, the cost that uh, Pfizer had to incur in order to get that patent. So ABC Pharma's selling a patent for 10,000 and get, and Pfizer on the other side of that is recording a patent for $30 million. Let's write some notes down. What are the things that we need to know so far about intangible assets? We're going to get to internally generated, but first let's start with our heading intangible assets. Most costs incurred, this is the really important point about intangible assets, most costs incurred to develop and or create, design, and test 
a product or idea. That is later, once it's successful, it is later copywritten, piece of an artistic work, patented, trademarked, franchised, or licensed. Most of these costs are not capitalized, meaning they're not recorded as intangible assets. To capitalize a cost means to record an asset on the balance sheet. And this is one caveat other than legal and registration costs. Let's just lump that into other than legal costs. The costs other than legal are considered research and development and because we don't know if they're going to be successful and we don't know how much revenues they're going to bring us they are expensed immediately expensed as incurred Okay, let's return to our slides now. How should an intangible asset become an expense? So if we, once we are able to capitalize, so let's say Pfizer purchases a $30 million patent, how does that ever become an expense? Well, assume your company purchased a 20 year license. Let's say you're, you work for Gap and Gap purchases the license, the right to print a uh, cute little Minnie Mouse on clothing and sell that for profit. 20 year license expected to bring the company revenues for the next 20 years. How long should that expense? How long should the company expense that license? Well, clearly over the 20, whatever uh, Gap had to pay Walt Disney for the right to print Mickey and Minnie on the clothing, that should be allocated across 20 years. Okay, what if your company purchased a 20 year license, so you have the right to use it for 20 years, but you think you're only gonna use it for the next 10 years. How long should you expense the license? Well, obviously for 10 years. So always for the shorter of, if the useful life is less than the legal life, we use the useful life. How long is this going to bring us future cash flows or revenues? How about this? Assume your company just purchased a renewable license and the company plans to renew the license indefinitely. How long should you expense that license? Well, how do you divide a cost by an infinite number? What would you get? You would get zero. So if you expect to use that intangible asset forever, for as long as you can see, then you would not amortize the cost. Amortization is just like depreciation. It's exactly the same thing. But when we talk about allocating the cost over time for an intangible asset, we simply call it amortization instead of depreciation. Let's talk about some specific types of intangible assets. Let's start with trademarks and trade names. In the US, trademarks and trade names have legal protection for an indefinite number of 10 year renewal periods. So it's up to the company who obtains that trademark, whether or not they wanna renew it after the 10 year period expires. If they do renew it, they can renew it once, twice, or uh, indefinitely. If a company is purchasing a trademark from another entity, the cost to purchase that trademark would be recorded as an intangible asset in the classification trademarks. If the company is creating or developing the trademark, they do not capitalize the costs or they expense immediately the cost of creating or developing, all those internal costs. Only capitalize legal costs, registration fees, consulting fees. Amounts, costs, costs incurred in dealing with organizations outside of your company. Since trademarks can be used for one 10 year period, less than a 10 year period, or indefinitely, if the asset has a limited useful life, amortize the cost over the useful life. And if it doesn't, it just stays there. We do have to test for decreases in value called impairment, but we'll cover that in a future video. True or false, a trademark can have an indefinite life and remain on the balance sheet at its acquisition cost forever. We just mentioned here that that is true. If uh, I mean, it's tested for impairment, but it can remain, if it's not impaired, it can remain at its acquisition cost forever.
indefinitely. Let's take a look at an example. Green Toys acquires a trademark for $6 million on January 1st, 2020. Green Toys expects to benefit from the trademark evenly over a 10-year period. Record the purchase of the trademark and the amortization of the trademark at the end of the year. So when the company purchases the trademark for $6 million on January 1st, it does just that. It records a trademark, which would then be reported on the balance sheet under the intangible assets section. And of course, it records the cash payment. At the end of the year, we're going to reduce that trademark's value. We're going to take the $6 million allocated across 10 years and get our amortization expense on December 31st, the end of the year one, of $600,000. And then our credit can either be to the trademark account, we just directly re reduce the trademark's value, or the company can set up an accumulated amortization account re related to that trademark. Next example, Toy Story Inc., Toy Store Inc. acquires a trademark for $800,000 on January 1st, 2020. The company expects to benefit from the trademark indefinitely. Record the purchase of the trademark and the amortization of the trademark at the end of the year. That latter part is a bit of a trick question. So on January 1st, record the cost of the trademark to the intangible asset trademark. And then at December 31st, well, if we take $800,000 and divide it by infinity, we're going to get zero. So no entry is needed. Copyrights. Examples of copyrights include what, what type of work might be copywritten. Plays, literary works, musical works, pictures, photographs, video, auto, audio, visual material. The copyright does have a limited life. The legal life of a copyright is the life of the creator, remaining life of the creator, plus 70 years. As we've seen before, when a company is incurring costs to develop the artistic work, we don't capitalize those costs of creating or developing it, only capitalize legal registration costs. But if a company acquires or buys a copyright from another entity and any legal costs incurred to defend that copyright, those would be capitalized. Amortize the cost, allocate the cost of the copyright over its useful life, and that useful life might be less than the legal life of 70 years plus the remaining life of the creator. True or false, a company can have an indefinite life, a copyright can have an indefinite life, and can remain on a company's balance sheet forever. The answer to that is false, amortized to an expense over the useful life if it's less than the legal life. Franchises and similar to franchises are licenses, the right to use something that doesn't belong to you for a period of time. They're operating rights. They grant the buyer the right to use an idea, a product, a trademark, a property, could be something else. They can, they're just an agreement between two parties, the franchisor and the franchisee or the licensor and the licensee. Uh, so it's just an agreement between the two parties so they can set it up with a limited life or it can have an indefinite life. And as you know, if the intangible asset has a limited life, amortize the cost over the useful life of the franchise or the, or the license. And if it has an indefinite life, just keep it at cost and do not amortize. Patents give the holder of the patent exclusive use to whatever uh, product or idea is, is being patented for 20 years. Uh, could be used, could, the company could ex that purchases the patent could expect to use it for less than 20 years. The useful life could be less than the legal life, but the maximum time is 20 years. Capitalize any costs if you're buying a patent from another organization. And as we said earlier, expense any research and development costs incurred in developing a product or idea that is then patented. Amortize or the legal life or useful life, whichever is shorter. You should see um, these rules being shown again and again. Here's a quick example. Harcott Company incurs $180,000 in legal costs on January 1st, 2017 to successfully defend a patent. The patent's useful life is 12 years, amortized on a straight line basis. Harcott records the legal fees and the amortization of 27 at the end of the year as follows. So beginning of the year, record not to no debit to legal costs or legal fees or legal expenses. Debit to patents. In other words, we are capitalizing these legal costs to the intangible asset account, credit cash, the cost incurred, uh, how it was paid for. The end of the year, we need to amortize because this has a useful life of 12 years. So we divide the 180,000 cost of the patent by 12 years, straight line, and we record amortization expense 
That's an operating expense for the company. And then our credit will either be to the patents, take down that patent account directly, or we can use accumulated amortization account. Now that we've gone through each different type of account, let's write some notes about the different types of intangible assets and what we know about them related to their legal and useful lives, if any. So in one column, I'm going to write the type of intangible asset. And then in the other column, I'm going to say, does it have a limited or unlimited life? Or what do we know about the life? Because if it's limited, we know, we know we not need to record amortization expense. And if it's unlimited, we don't. Let's start with trademarks in no particular order. Let's start with trademarks and trade names. And what do we know about the legal life of trademarks and trade names? When a company buys a trademark, registers for a trademark, it can use it for 10 years, but it can renew that indefinitely. So is it limited or unlimited? It, it depends on the company. So can be renewed indefinitely. So it's based on what the company expects, based on the company's expected useful life. So it can be either. And we'll just be told in every problem that we look at. So it can have either a limited or it can have either a limited or an unlimited useful life. And we'll be told in our examples. Copyrights. We are going to use the shorter of the uh, useful life that the company estimates, how long it is going, this copyright is going to help the company produce future revenues, or 70 years plus the remaining life of the creator. Franchises and licenses. So remember, these are just agreements between two parties, and they can write whatever they want for that term of the franchise license. So it can be either limited or, uh, instead of unlimited, let's say indefinite. It's a more proper term. Limited or unlimited or indefinite. And then patents. Patents do always have a limited life, and that limited life is always either the shorter of the company's expect expectation of the asset's useful life, how long does, does the company think this patent is going to help bring revenues into the company, or the actual legal life, which is 20 years. And that includes this beginning video on intangible assets. We covered everything except goodwill, which will be in the next video.